Hi, I'm John. Welcome to my video on how to test AC motors. Here we have an AC motor. It's a three-phase AC motor, typical of what you would find on a treadmill. And I've got a standard multimeter here. And I'm going to show you the tests that you can do. If you have a three-phase AC motor, which you will, if it's a treadmill and it's an AC motor treadmill, you will have three wires, rather like these here. Uh, so these are just connected straight into the motor, to the terminals inside there. Uh, and you'll have perhaps connectors on the end here on the actual machine that you're testing. But the principle of what I'm going to show you is the same. All you need to do is select your multimeter onto the ohms range. Let's bring that a bit closer. Uh, so I've selected the ohms range and I've selected the lowest possible range here. The reason I've done that is because I'm expecting my wires to actually be continuous and connected inside. So the way that the motor works is that looking at the three wires here, I'm expecting this wire to be connected to that wire and I'm expecting that wire to be connected to this one and those two to be connected together. In other words, they're all connected together. And all I need to test for is to see what the resistance is of those wires. And because I'm expecting the wires to be connected, I've selected a low range because I would expect the resistance to be low. So let's see what we've got. Let's test the first pair. You can test these in any combination, but there's three, three uh, tests that you need to do. So I'm gonna randomly test this wire with the second one up there in the middle and if we look on the meter we see what we get 71 72 ohms okay now i didn't know that motor is going to be 71 72 ohms yours will be different um, because it will be according to how much wire is inside there and every motor is going to be slightly different so one pair of windings is 72 i now need to check another pair so what i'm going to do is move move my probe to here that should also be about 72 or 71 72 and it is and then finally the final pair is going to be that one there and this one here. That should also be about 72. There we go. Exactly the same pretty much. And in just doing that test, I know that those windings, I'm getting pretty much the same value on every winding. And all the windings are giving me a result, which means that that motor electrically is good. Now there's one more test I can do. And for this one, I'm going to test the earth. Uh, to find out whether the any of the windings are connected to earth. So to do that, I'm now going to select a very high resistance reading because I'm not expecting the windings to be connected to earth because if I do, I'm going to get a short circuit, the motor's likely to blow up, it'll be tripping fuses, and unless that's happening, um, you would uh, uh, you probably won't have a short circuit. So I'm not expecting a short circuit. In other words, I'm expecting an extremely high resistance out of the range of my meter between these three wires and a metal contact point on the motor. So let's turn the motor around and see if we can find some bare metal because a lot of this is painted. There's some bare metal there, look in the uh, shaft. So what I'm going to do is hold one of my probes onto the wire there and I'm just going to attach my probe onto here and I can get a good connection. There we are. Now we've got one there. Now you notice there was a reading to start with. That was because I was touching the probe. You can probably see my middle finger there touching the metal. And because I'm touching both ends of the probe with my hands, I'm actually getting the resistance through my body. So you've got to be careful not to touch the probe. So it doesn't matter if I touch one, but I need to make sure I'm not touching the other. Otherwise I get a false reading. Now you see the meter showing one. In other words, it's out of the range. The resistance is higher than 20 mega ohms, which is the maximum my meter can read. In other words, that's good because I don't want these, these wires connected to any part of the metal. And I can check that one, do the same test. Again, being careful not to touch the probe with my fingers. And then we take the read and there we are. That's the same. And the third wire should also be not connected, which I already know it's not. There we are, not connected at all. So those are the two tests. You're testing between a low resistance to check that all these windings are connected together. You will have some val value of resistance. In my case, it was about 71 ohms, but yours might be different. It might be 10 ohms, it might be five ohms, it might be 20 ohms, who knows? Uh, it all depends on the motor. Uh, and the other test you do is to check that those windings, and if all of your windings are good, then you can really select any one of these because you already know they're connected and do that one simple test and it should be that you get no reading at all. In other words, the resistance is very, very high. And if you get that, then that means your motor's good. And if you put electricity on your motor, it will absolutely turn. There we go. I hope that's of help.